This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation, specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e-learning to instructor-led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. So let's do a quick demo now of customizing SharePoint using the browser. So there are some basic things that we can do uh, using the browser, layouts, colors, fonts, um, and then also going into the site settings and applying themes and that kind of stuff. So let's just see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and bring up my team site here. And the first thing that I can do is I can customize this page, right? And if you look at the tabbed browsing across the top, if I click on page, and you would have this on every single page in your website, uh, you'll notice there's a certain layout um, and uh, certain text that's in here, certain uh, web parts that are in here. So once I click the page tab, you've got a number of different um, elements in here, different options. I can shortcut to the settings or the permissions, uh, all that kind of stuff, but I can also click the edit button. Now you have some options here. You could edit in SharePoint Designer if you had SharePoint Designer installed. That will launch SharePoint Designer hooked into this particular page. That would be for a bit more advanced editing. Or I can just choose edit. That's going to give me a sort of WYSIWYG experience to edit the page. And notice that in our tabbed uh, ribbon interface here, we now have our editing tools. So included in the editing tools are things like being able to paste, cut and paste. Um, we've got, you know, the ability to use some basic formatting. So I've bolded that word. Um, perhaps I want to make these words uh, a different color. We'll make them red so they stand out a little bit. We're doing some basic formatting, changing the fonts. It looks just like a Word document, right? I can also change the layout. So if in this text box I want to change it to a couple of columns, I could do that. So I've changed the layout now to two columns, and it sort of shifted things around a little bit. The layout, perhaps I want two columns with a header and a footer. So now there's a header up here, um, and if I want this picture to be up in the header, I can just drag it up there. Okay, so if I didn't like that, I can undo that move, just like a Word document. Go ahead and continue to change the layout. Um, we'll go back to uh, one column with a sidebar. But also in here, I can insert things. So in, in addition to the basic formatting, I can go to the Insert tab, and I could insert a hyperlink. I could upload a file or insert a picture. Now notice that the pictures that I insert could be from a computer. So in other words, if I do that, it's going to let me browse um, my local computer so I can try to find a picture. Go ahead and click Cancel. Or the picture could be from an address. If I do a picture from an address, it's an actual URL. Um, a URL uh, that points all the way through to the picture. Right, so we're grabbing that picture off the web somewhere. When you do that, it's not uncommon for um, SharePoint power users or designers, people that are building pages like this, to have a picture library. So if I click Cancel, and I were to go in here and I were to create, um, you know, let's say I wanted to go in and create a new library of some sort, click More Options, and I could create a picture library. Then inside of that, I start uploading all my pictures. It's a great place to store a bunch of pictures that you plan to use throughout your site. Right? So here I'm creating various different assets, libraries, um, and you can filter them here. So if it's a library I want to see, I could create a picture library. And you've got some settings over here. I could create a wiki page library, a slide library, you know, a number of different types of libraries. Or perhaps it was a list I wanted to create. Right, like a calendar item, a contacts item, a number of different uh, lists that you see here. Or other types of pages. Could be a web part page or a basic uh, text page. And I can also create sites. And these are the various different templates that I have for creating different kinds of sites. Right? So it's not uncommon, if we go ahead and close that down, 
to create a picture library somewhere within your site structure, upload the pictures into there, and then for each picture uh, has its own unique URL. And you can use those URLs to input pictures into here. So let's go ahead and back that up a little bit. Um, let's go ahead back to format text. And let's say we did want that to be uh, a little bit bigger. Um, we can also edit through the browser, we can edit the layout of these web parts. So in this case, this is a shared documents web part. It doesn't have to be here. If you use the little drop arrow, we can delete this web part. Now keep in mind that does not delete the document library. What you see on this page is just a web part that gives you a view into the document library. The library itself is in a different location. Or I can edit the web part. And that's true of any web part, whether it's a different kind of list item, whether it's a different kind of library, uh, whether it's a picture or whatever it might be. When you choose to edit the item, you've got a number of different properties here that you can go through. Um, you can decide how you want to display the toolbar that's associated with this on this particular page. And then as I scroll down, you'll notice changes to the appearance, like its title, uh, the height and width, that it's going to fit on the page, uh, change some layout settings, right? some advanced settings, and so on. So you would just kind of go through and see what the various different options are, apply those options, and see what the best look and feel is to you for that particular web part. Now, once we've made all the changes on here, uh, you'll also notice, by the way, as I've selected this web part, we've got these contextual tabs. So you can see I've got a number of different options in here um, specifically related to web parts. So it's kind of same options that I might have had uh, when I clicked the little down arrow uh, on there. But so that's a number of different options we have for customizing the page. If I go back to the page tab, I would have to save my changing changes. So go ahead and hit save and close, and we're back to a home page, and it just looks a little bit different. I made some edits to it. Some basic browser editing. Now a couple other things really quickly that you can do in the browser, and there's much more. Right, it can, you know, for the sake of time, uh, we won't go into all of it, but if I go to the site settings, uh, you'll notice there's a section here for look and feel. So if you want to change the title, description, and icon that appears on your page, uh, you want to change, if I click Quick Launch, I want to change what's showing up on the, the left side panel of my page. It's a basic navigation. We can add other navigation links into there. We can change the headings, so if you don't like the headings, anytime you see this little icon with the pencil, that's an edit icon. So I could change that. If I didn't want it to be called libraries, I wanted it to be called, um, you know, doc stores, click OK, and that's what it's going to be called now. So that's one thing that we can do. I go to the home page, uh, I can see the navigation on the left side here has changed a little bit. Back to site settings. You've also got things like the top link bar, which is the nav bar across the top. Uh, if you want to add certain tabs, a lot of times it would not be uncommon in the top link bar to create um, links to other um, top level sites in your hierarchy, right? So that we can start to link them together. So if I wanted to put sales as an example, let's just put that in there for right now, and now I go to the home page, you'll notice my navigation tabs now have uh, other links here, and those will follow throughout the site. Okay? But you'll want to make sure that those show up in every sub-site that you have as well, because every sub-site has its own settings for how those navigation links work. Last thing that I want to show you is under site settings, uh, site theme. If you click on site theme, this is how you can change all the colors, right? So currently, uh, we just have a default theme, but if we wanted it to be uh, of a different color, and you can see that there are colors of followed hyperlinks, colors of headings, and also the colors of all the um, uh, nav bars around it. So there's a lot of themes in here, and it is possible for your designers to create some custom themes and get them into SharePoint. Um, get them uploaded into SharePoint. So you can see a number of those themes in here. So we would go down and you can customize them further. 
right here by selecting the actual color you want for those various different accents, and then you can preview it. Okay, and then ultimately you would apply it if you decided you wanted that theme throughout your site. Okay, so that's another example of just basic browser editing. So what I'm showing you here is really about power users. Um, the site collection administrators and even the individual site administrators, because they can do all of these changes uh, for themselves at that lower level, right? Uh, we want to give them the, this power or not. So here we can see the site and what it might look like. This is the, this is the preview, right? And then with the new colors and the new link colors and so on. So if I decide that that's ugly and I don't want that, I can close that down, click cancel, and we're back to um, what the page was looking like before.